I entered the service after I graduated high school because the dropouts already had the jobs. And uh, I came out of the service and I get I came out of the service and I entered Temple University, 1960, physical education major. Oh, I hear you laughing. You know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people laugh at physical education. Ah oh, ha, phys ed, you're dumb, you know. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, uh, I was pretty smart and uh, I, I got this girlfriend. I, I, I met this girl, very brilliant girl. I had uh, an IQ of about 300. Thousand, 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 three hundred thousand IQ. Got a, a philosophy major, man. Oh, she was fantastic. Used to walk around the house saying, why is there air? And, and I used to look at it. Any phys ed major knows why there's air. You know? There's air to blow up volleyballs, blow up basketballs. You, know? you guys called me dumb for crying out loud. Walking around asking why there's air. But anyway, that's the thing to do when you're a freshman. Get yourself a brilliant girl to take care of you. She used to dress up like me and take my exams and everything. It's really beautiful. I bought a 1942 Dodge for $75, my whole life savings from the service. And uh, I used to drive from her house. I lived in Philadelphia. I used to drive to Trenton, 40-mile drive. And uh, it was during the winter time, and when I bought the car, it had four, four bolt-headed tires. So I went out, and with the last couple of dollars I had, I bought a snow tire, and I put it on the right rear, and about 75 sandbags, you know, for traction, in case I get into some snow or ice or something, you know, just dig right in on that right side, and the car would raise up on that one wheel. And, <laughs> and I wrote Captain America on the side, because... Uh, it was a beautiful car, man. It, used to, it wouldn't go over 50. You go 51 and say, hey, cut it out. <laughs> the kind of car I had, man. Beautiful. And uh, I used to drive to her house, uh, get to her house around 4 in the afternoon. And her parents, uh, I think her parents wanted to get rid of her because as soon as I get there, they go upstairs, you know, and take the dog with them, too, you know. <laughs> They had one of these little dogs. They were very wealthy people. They had one of these little dogs in a house, about a 37,000 room house. And they had a dog was as big as my fist, you know, I knew, for protection. You know, I said, well, people are kooky, man. Now in Greenwich Village, I used to live in Greenwich Village, a guy with a one room apartment and, and he had to use somebody else's bathroom would have a dog that's as big as a Mack truck. You know, like the dog would command him. I must go. You know? and, and he had to take the dog out, man. He couldn't spank it, you know. He hit that dog, the dog would eat him alive, you know. Hey, listen, that's where I got, we got our Doberman from an old used master that he ate up. And these people with this big house got this dog so small. You know, what, what protection is it? You put your leg through, through the window, the dog, I know what it'll do. It'll pee all over the place. That's it. Do, man. You, you come into anybody's house and say, rah, the one of those dogs, they poof all over everybody. Man. I guess maybe that's the safety device, right? You feel something, hey, somebody's in the house, my legs are. Yeah. Ridiculous. Well, anyhow, I used to sit there and uh, we would do about three minutes worth of homework and then we would cuddle up and start kissing. Oh, we would kiss for 12 hours, man. Just kiss everywhere. Kiss on the sofa, move to the TV set, kiss up on the whatnot shelf, you know, uh, uh, underneath the refrigerator, all over the place. We're just kissing. You kiss so long until the inside of the mouth gets raw, you know, and the lips swell up. And you say, listen, I think we better cut it out, all right? But tell you what, first one heals call, all right? So... I get in the old Captain America car, you know, and I'm driving. And the whole time we were kissing, it snowed and the hail fell and everything, and the roads just, whew, the roads were frozen. So I'm driving, and very sleepy, and I get so sleepy that I go into a world of fantasy, you know. I just, I'm really tired. I would like to sleep now. I had another hour and a half drive, and it's ridiculous. And, well, listen, you take a little nap if you want. Are you kidding? Well, look, uh, the road's going straight, and right now I got the car pointed straight. I don't see why I can't take a little nap right now. 
I better not do it. A leaf blew in front of the car. Oh, I've hit a cow. I, you know, oh, I'm driving. And I'll never forget it. I took it up to 50. I was living dangerously, you know. And uh, I went into a bad right skid. Whack! And as soon as I went into the skid, I tried to remember the safe driving manual, you know, to save your life. If you go into a skid, the safe driving manual says, if you go into a skid, turn in the direction of the skid. Which doesn't make sense at all to me, because that's like if a guy throws a left hook at you, you lean into it, you know. <laughs> says, forget it, I'm turning left and hitting the brake. Whack! Wound up going down the road, 50 miles an hour, sideways. <laughs> Which is a beautiful sight, by the way. You look out your front window and you see things going by like this, you know. And if you want, you just turn right around. You don't have to steer. Just look out the side door. You know? And if you have an accident, you can get out in a hurry, man. It can't hurt you. I love it. Like, they don't build cars like that. And I hit a tree. <laughs> As soon as I hit the tree, I remembered I'm in trouble because in my glove compartment, I've got 10 old moving violation tickets, which are like savings bonds. The longer you keep them, the greater they mature, you know? <laughs> and I figure I owe the city about $2 million. I know they're gonna throw me in jail for life. So I push the car away from the tree and I try and move it, wah, 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 and it won't move it at all because the A-frame has fallen out, see? Well, I didn't know what an A-frame was until I took it to a mechanic and you know, and it, whoa, your A-frame's falling out. <laughs> Cost you a million dollars. <laughs> and that's the labor, you know, that kind of... So I'm trying to move, wah, 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 and, it won't, and I'm scared because the cops are gonna catch me. I gotta get out of here somehow, you know. Up comes the safety for all truck driver, gets it out of the car, I didn't even ask him to help me. Starts to put 20 flares around the car. What the hell do you think, is this my birthday or something? <laughs> Have you ever tried to blow out a flare? <laughs> now I'm sore on the outside and the inside, you know. All right, now the beautiful thing are the, are the cops. Here come the and they get out and they look at the thing and the motor's in the front seat, trees leaning on a 45 degree angle, box all chewed out of it and uh, the tires are all flat and uh, 20 flares around the car and this guy says, what happened? <laughs> I said, well, I was driving along and uh, this tree jumped right out of the forest and bit my car, boy. They'd ask you that, no matter what, you could run over a guy and leave him under the car, and the guy's, all right, what happened here? <laughs> oh, well, the guy was sleeping, and he was cold, and I had nothing to cover him up, so I figured I'd use the car, you know? I'd protect him from something. Like Ridiculous, boy. This is a true story. It happened to me in San Francisco. I had a tooth pulled at 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I, the dentist gave me Novocaine and everything, and uh, around 5, I went into great pain in that area. Uh, I'd like to say a few words about Novocaine versus pain. First of all, Novocaine does not kill pain. It postpones it <laughs> and gives it a chance to build little pain buddies over to the side, you know. <laughs> about five o'clock, we're gonna kill that hole over there. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, man, I really started to suffer, and I couldn't stop it because the dentist, uh, he, he was, you know, he had left the office, and I had nothing, I just had to just sit there, and I know I can't take certain things because I have to go to work. Can't take coding because it'll make me drowsy, stuff like that. So I'm working on uh, aspirin and stuff like that, APCs, and there's nothing, I'm still, boom, 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 headache, pain, oh, fatigue, everything. And then I remembered, those commercials where they interview the people, you know, and they say, uh, sir, have you ever, uh, tell us about your headache. Have you ever had one? Have I? Christ! One time, it ate my foot right off. Just spit it right off, and then it killed my kneecap, boy. And I took two of them pills there and uh, put the toes back and the kneecaps back, and I'm wonderful. And I went out and I bought a bottle of that stuff, you know, and I took 12 of them. And I waited four weeks. <laughs> Nothing. Excess stomach acid, that's what I <laughs> So I'm sitting there feeling sorry for myself. I got two hours before I go to work, and I know I can't call up the boss and say get a replacement because, you know, two hours is not enough. And I'm just sitting there feeling sorry for myself. And in comes my landlord's wife, and she says, listen, um, you got a toothache. I didn't know. She said, you had it poor. I said, yeah. She said, you're having pain. Yes. Whew. She said, well, did you take this? Yes, I took this. Did you take that? Yes, I took all those things. And I'm still miserable. She said, well, here, why don't you take my two Midol tablets? I said, don't fool around with me, please. And 
And besides, you got the wrong gender and everything. That's, get out of here, no jokes. She said, no, I'm serious, why don't you take him? Well, the pain just kept up. So I, I looked at her and it just got so bad, I said, look, uh, we, give me the two pills and don't tell anybody, all right? I took them, you know, and I went back and 10 minutes passed and the pain went away. And I tried to make the pain come. <laughs> nothing, nothing. It was beautiful. I've got an hour to go to work and the pain's gone. My dog did it. Good old my dog. And I said, listen, this is great. Give me another one because this one may wear off. You know, I need one for the second show. She said, I don't have any more. I said, what are you, some kind of junkie dealer or something? <laughs> You want a hundred dollars? I'll give you a hundred dollars. Give me the my dog, family, would you please? She said, I really don't have any more, but you can get them at the drugstore. I said, okay, I know where to get them, you know. And I ran into the drugstore. I was so happy, man. I said, hey, druggist, come here. Give me a can of my doll, and it's for me. And the druggist said, I don't give a darn. There's a lot of weird guys come in here every day, you know. But I want you to know that, boy, I took them all night long and no pain, it didn't come back or nothing. And in the morning I had a little headache, I took one for that and gone. That stuff is beautiful. And you women don't tell anybody about it, man. Keep all the goodies to yourself. And I tell you, fellas, there's nothing wrong with me. My voice is no higher than it used to be. Well, that's the truth. Of course, every 28 days I get a little irritable. I play football for Temple University, and it's the truth, see? Don't keep asking me, did you really play? Yes, I really played. At one time, I had a beautiful body. I weighed, uh, I weighed 192 pounds, and they made me a fullback. Now, before you start tuning up, let me get my story finished. <laughs> no, the truth of the matter is that uh, it didn't take much to play for t Temple at the time that I was playing, because we had lost 27 games in a row. <laughs> And uh, we played against real weak teams. I mean, teams like uh, Muhlenberg, Lafayette, um, what's it, Gettysburg, yeah. Get they all beat us, they all killed us. Especially Hofstra. Hofstra beat us 900 or nothing. <laughs> In their street clothes, man, they wiped us out. You know? and it, Vassar wouldn't even play us, that's how bad we were, man. Get out of here, we don't even want you on our schedule. So, I'm going to give you some insight as to what goes on in a loser's locker room. We're going to play against Hofstra, which is a really terrible school. They killed us every year, boy. And when you play for a team like Temple, you got nothing to do except pace up and down in the locker room. And you say to yourself, boy, I sure do hope I don't get hurt. <laughs> uh, I almost made a tackle last week. I must have been crazy out there or something. <laughs> Nobody else is trying out there. I don't know why I got to be the one all the time. I play on the second team, which is actually the nut squad. Now, these are guys that can play, but they're afraid. They don't want to go out there, so they do nutty things. Like they put the helmet on sideways, looking out through the ear hole. <laughs> guys got on scuba diving suits, no shoe and an ice skate, you know, walking around. <laughs> second team is very quiet, because they're going to go out, scared to death. That's what they are. Catholics on the squad always seem to have something special going, because they're over in the corner, dominant. Knows, Father, please don't I'm not Catholic, but I figure if it works for him, yeah, me too, Father. He's a friend of mine. He told me how to do this. Here, please accept me. You know, we'll pace it up and down. First team's getting last rights. I'm a job of the week. And we're warming. The coach is drawing trick plays on the blackboard because he has no personnel whatsoever, and he knows he's got to work with something that'll trick him. You know. All right, you guys, listen up. Uh, when they come out of the huddle, line up backwards. <laughs> and just let them run right over you and then we'll raise the flag and everything while you're singing the national anthem, all right? We'll get pity somewhere, I'll tell you that. In comes the athletic director. says, I'd like to talk to the boys. What? I'd like to talk to the boys. Okay. May I have your attention, please, fellas? This is uh, the athletic director, Mr. Ernie Cassell. He's the man that's responsible for giving most of you the scholarships. <laughs> He'd like to talk to you, Mr. Cassell. Thank you very much, Coach Macris. Well, boys, here we are again. We're going out to have another fine football game. Gonna go out and play against Hofstra, because you already know that. 
You know, they beat us last year 900 to nothing. The year before that, they beat us 900 to nothing. I was over in their locker room, I had a chance to look at some of their players, and Christ, they're bigger than they were last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> Fellas, I looked out in the stands, we only have 12 people out there. <laughs> and this is homecoming. <laughs> Just want to say a few words to you. This is our first game on television. We want to keep this television contract going because this is the only way we can make some money to buy a little scuba diving suits and uh, snowshoes and ice skates for all the weird old squads here. <laughs> so we're gonna say to you, please, remember that you're on TV. By that I mean, don't worry about winning the game as much as we want you to be concerned with the fact that while you're out there on the field, we're gonna ask you, please, do not touch certain areas of your bodies while you're out there on the football field. <laughs> because if you're out there digging and scratching, the people at home are gonna turn you right off and we're gonna lose the contract. So please, do not touch certain areas of your bodies while you're out there on the field. Now we're gonna pass out these affidavits and ask you to sign them, saying that you will not touch certain areas of your bodies while you're out there on a the football field, all right? So we signed them and we went out, you know, and I'm with the second team and <laughs> First team's got the ninth time for last right, Dominic, Dominic, Dominic. Hofstra came out of the locker room. I had never seen guys so big before in my life. They had just brought 11 guys with them. Smallest guy on the squad was 6'1", 490 pounds. He was a halfback. Ran 109 one, had long teeth hanging out of his mouth. Every one of them just had one eye in the center of the forehead. <laughs> was beating them out onto the field with a ball and chain, hitting them smack in the back of the head. Get out of there! Go on, Igor! What's good, Igor? First team said, oh, God, don't look at him. If you don't look at him, you won't get scared. Second team went crazy. Guys are ripping their clothes off. I can't play naked! Throw some meat at him. Maybe they'll eat that. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Our ball, first thing we did, we went to play. And for fire of this, 11 Hofstra guys still standing. Oh, yeah. 11 Timbleman out cold on the ground. So you all right, get the nut squad, make it or not, get out there. <laughs> we're carrying them off, and as we're carrying them off, I swear I heard one Temple guy on the ground say, can we get up now? No, you move, I'll punch you right in the mouth. So help me, get out of here. We carry him off there to coach you. All right, get out there, second team, let's go. <laughs> we got a quarterback that's 2-1. <laughs> All right, run the kamikaze play on one. All right, kamikaze. Cosby up the middle, the whole team off the field. Break. We break out of the huddle, the quarterback goes up to ship. One, two, ping, gives me the ball. I take one step and I look and there's a hole. And I had never seen a hole. <laughs> Playing for Temple. And I said, God, a hole. <laughs> I turned to the people in the stand, look at this, a hole, you see this? He said, yeah, hurry up, run. I said, wait a minute, it may be a mirage. <laughs> you can't tell. I said, well, I better get moving, I'll never forget it. It was a big hole with a defensive man on the ground. I planted one foot, stepped over him. When I did, he stood up and hit me. <laughs> and the pain was tremendous <laughs> and I threw down the ball and I said oh <laughs> I've been hit in the you'd better not touch <laughs> any areas of your body while you're on the football here <laughs> so I grabbed my head <laughs> and I said oh yes what's your matter I said I can't take nothing until they bring a commercial on all right thank you and good night <laughs>